axle half shaft removal and installation. After raising the vehicle, remove the wheel. Some axle nuts are staked. It's recommended that we remove the stake before we unthread the axle nut. Here, I'm going to use a special unstaking punch. It's got a unique tip. Place the tip in the slot on the axle and then hit it with a hammer to destake it. Then the axle nut can be removed with the impact gun. Raise the vehicle to working height. Then locate the lower ball joint. Look for the most effective way to separate the steering knuckle. There are three options on this vehicle. There's a castle nut for the ball joint that can be removed and the ball joint could be separated at the lower control arm. There's a pinch nut that holds the ball joint to the steering knuckle. And finally, there are two bolts and nuts that hold the strut tower to the steering knuckle. I prefer not to take it off here because it has a greater effect on the wheel alignment. So we will be choosing one of the ball joint options. This picture does not belong to the Subaru, but it illustrates other designs. There are three bolts that hold the lower ball joint to the lower control arm. This would also be an excellent place to separate the ball joint from the steering knuckle on this particular vehicle. The last concern is the stabilizer bar and stabilizer bar link. The tension of the stabilizer bar could impact our ability to separate the ball joint from the steering knuckle. It may be required to unbolt the stabilizer bar link from the lower control arm. Removing the pinch bolt is the best choice for this vehicle. Use your impact gun to remove the pinch bolt. This design does not have a nut on the back side of the pinch bolt, but some do, so look carefully. Pull down on the lower control arm to separate the ball joint from the knuckle. You may need to use a pry bar if you're unable to do it manually. Once the ball joint has cleared the steering knuckle, push the steering knuckle out of the way so you can separate them. Once the ball joint is out of the steering knuckle, you can see that the ball joint has a cutout where the pinch bolt slides through. This prevents the ball joint from pulling out when the pinch bolt is installed. Lift up and pull out on the steering knuckle and brake assembly as you pull the axle out of the steering knuckle and hub. The axle is still attached to the transaxle. We need to separate the axle from the transaxle to remove it from the vehicle. Carefully pry between the transaxle and the inner CV joint, making sure to pry evenly. This will compress the inner sur clip, allowing the axle to be removed from the transaxle. Once the sur clip has been released from the transaxle, you can grab the axle by hand and pull it out the rest of the way. You may need to lift the steering knuckle and brake assembly out of the way to remove the axle the cert clip and axle splines can now be inspected for any wear or damage. Additionally, inspect the surface where the axle seal rides, making sure that it's not damaged. Then inspect the axle seal that's in the transaxle. Use your finger as you run it across the seal, feeling for any nicks or cuts and checking to make sure that the seal is still pliable. whether it's a new one or you're putting this one back in, is we want to make sure that we've got some lubricant where the seal goes. We want to make sure that the circlip is centered in a good position. And then we got to go ahead and get this back into the transaxle. As this goes up, as the axle goes in, I've got to get it in here. I've got to make sure it lines up. I've got to twist it a little bit to make sure that it is splined. So now I can feel that it is engaged into the side gear. What we're going to do is we're going to use a plastic faced hammer to hit on this rather than a metal hammer. We also have to apply as much inward force to push that axle in 
so it goes into the end of the transaxle. Now, all CV joints have a plunge joint to them, and so you'll notice this has a certain amount of in and out give to it. Well, if I just hammer on it like this, it's just gonna bounce on that plunge. So you need to lean into it, and so I'm gonna push really hard, and hear that? Until that plunge hits the bottom of the axle, and then I'm going to smack on the end of the axle in order to seat that into the transaxle. I like to apply some anti-seize lubricant onto the splines of the axle shaft. Lift up on the spindle and work the axle into position. If needed, lift from a different angle so that you can get the splines of the axle lined up with the splines on the hub. Now thread the new axle nut on finger tight. Pull down on the lower control arm, align the ball joint with the spindle, and seat the ball joint into the spindle. Push up on the ball joint to fully seat it in the spindle and insert the pinch bolt and tighten it finger tight. Now tighten the pinch bolt to torque specifications. Run the axle nut up with the impact gun, but don't over tighten it. Here's a little trick with vented rotors. Stick a punch between the vents and rotate the rotor until it wedges up against the brake caliper bracket. This will hold the rotor from spinning as you torque down the axle nut. Make sure to remove the punch when you're done. Use a centering or drift punch to stake the new axle nut down to the axle. Put the wheel back on. Get the lug nut started by hand. Run them up carefully with an impact gun, but don't over tighten them. Lower the car down. Use the torque wrench to tighten them to specifications. 